What's up guys, it's Kevin here. I am actually now back in Japan. Wow, I always love coming back here. This time, I'm going to explore another area in Japan called Mie Prefecture. And this is nearby Nagoya. A lot of hidden gems, attractions, beautiful nature, and I'm so excited to explore. Let's go. Mie Prefecture is positioned in the middle of Japan right here and has 29 different areas. For this trip, I'll be going to Kuwana, Toba, Shima, and Kumano. My first stop is Kuwana for something really exciting. Alright, our first stop is going to be really fun. We are here at the Nagashima Spa Land. It's a huge amusement park with all kinds of things like hot springs, roller coasters, the shopping. So check it out. This place is really bright and colourful. The weather is really lovely today also. You'll be able to find many types of roller coasters here. Some go really high, they go upside down. 360, if you really are looking for an adrenaline blast, this is the place. Alright, I'm here for my first ride and we have the Hakuge here, which means white whale. It's a really big, really tall roller coaster. I'll show you in a bit right here. I'm really pumped up for this. So scary! <sighs> to catch my breath, I rode on the ferris wheel, which is actually really tall, about 90 meters at the peak. You can get an amazing bird's eye view of the theme park and relax. Another ride here is the acrobat, right behind me. And you tilt horizontally to fly like a bat and your arms and legs are dangling. I honestly felt this was so dizzying because I was not used to being horizontal. This free flying thing is really another level. <laughs> the highlight of the whole theme park is Steel Dragon 2000. It's so big, it covers the whole theme park and also it takes about 3 to 5 minutes to finish the whole ride. Not as scary as the white whale, but equally scary. Overall, there are many thrilling rides here for all ages, and I think Nagashima Spa Land is one of the best roller coaster places I have ever been to. For lunch, I ate at the on site restaurant, check out the cozy and classic interior, and had my favorite pork katsu curry with rice. It was really yummy. As the sun sets, I moved on to the next nearby spot. It's getting dark right now. It's only 4.30 and this is the Nobara no Sato, which is a very famous winter night illumination. Some lights are starting to appear, but we have to wait a bit more, maybe until like 5 plus, for it to be really dark and nice.
There is also a begonia garden which is indoor, has a huge amount of fresh, beautiful begonia flowers. I have never seen so many in my life, and they are huge, as big as my hand. It was really magical with the decorations, just walking around, I was amazed on how could they upkeep all of these flowers. Okay guys, this is it. I'm here now at the most famous spot, Tunnel of Light. It's so beautiful. Check it out. This is what I've always wanted to see. It's just so beautiful. It really fits the festive mood. in between the pyramid show and uh, feels like I'm walking into a fantasy or something like too many lights are shining Morning everyone, it's day 2 now here in Mia Prefecture Look out my hotel window, it's so bright already but it's only 6.40 Pretty pumped up, I'm going to see the Mikimoto Pearl Island where they have us aquaculture pearls Alright, one thing I really love about Japan is the convenience stores I love shopping in there to buy little goods and foods For breakfast, I bought this black unsweetened coffee and also my favourite red bean paste filling bun I love this growing up as a child, so, so yeah, I'm happy Finally, we have reached Toba, and this is like towards the coast of Mie Prefecture. It's a really nice scenic sea coast, you can see right here. So beautiful with the sun gleaming on the waters. And I have reached the Mikimoto Pearl Island, where we can take an overpass to the island. So this compound is really big, about 20,000 square feet. This is a statue of the founder, Mikimoto Kokichi, who was born in the Edo period, 1800s. We're gonna show you around the museum area, the museum and also the gallery really soon. Inside, there is a museum to showcase different types of oysters and the process on how pearls are made. I've never actually known how pearls are created, so this was really mind-blowing. Like, we don't learn this in school. Did you know that there are about 100,000 types of oysters, but only 6 right here can create pearls? And from there, only less than 10% of pearls here are accepted for Mikimoto standards. This is the really exciting part. We are going to watch how the Ama ladies are going to dive into the sea to catch some fresh oysters by hand. Do you see that? They're going deep down. There's a commercial store to buy pearl gifts, which are really premium, out of my reach, and some you can only find here in Toba, as well as a gallery for pearl artifacts with exquisite craftsmanship. Here we have a replica of the US Liberty Bell, but covered in pearls, marred of pearl flooring, and this crack is made with black pearls. One of the best things in this area is seafood and oysters. We are here to the Maruzan Oyster Farm. Apparently, there is an all-you-can-eat buffet. You just pay a set price, about 3,000 yen, and you can eat so much food, and that's what I'm going to do right now. Eat all my oysters. Ooh, I need to show you guys this view. Look at all of that. The oysters. Freshly caught oysters from this area. 
and they're so big. So you have to wear gloves to be very careful, otherwise you burn your hands. It was super fresh and succulent, like literally from the sea. And I ate so much that I thought I was becoming an oyster also. This is what the fried oyster looks like. Really nice and crispy, and you can dip it in mayo. And it's really, really succulent. Wow, the sun is out, guys. And now I am back here in the familiar spot at the Yokoyama Observatory. I wanted to see how this place looks like in winter. Maybe the trees would turn a little bit nice and with orange foliage. Every time I come here, my breath is taken away. As we walk up the stairs to the top of the cafe, the second floor viewpoint. Wow! Morning, it's now day 3. Here I am at Ise City. I think I woke up at like 7 something. I had a really good sleep again. And let me show you the view out of my hotel room. This is a really nice, quaint and serene place. You can see it's very calm. There's some mountains behind over here. As the last day today, I'm going to do something a bit more nature-ish. Hence, I'm wearing green. I'm going to go to the mountainous area called Kumano Kodo and see the forest. Yes, a Japanese forest. Okay, made it. Finally, I'm here at Kumano, at the southern tip of Mie. And this is a mountainous region. I'm ready for my hike. The weather's a bit chilly today, so I'm wearing a few layers. And I want to show you the view behind me. The sea behind me with the waves. Overall, very beautiful. So for my hike, we're going to go through this pass called the Matsumoto Toge Pass. And this is like a, a mini trail, which is not too difficult. I have never hiked in the forest in Japan before. So this was the first time for me. Okay, we've reached the Matsumoto Toge Trail entrance and it's so cool that they loan free hiking sticks. First thing first, lots of steps. But we are greeted by these really tall trees and it's so calming. I think they're so symmetrical. All the trees are aligned vertically in order and the air is so fresh here. Be careful of the steps here. The rocks are a little bit uneven. So this is where monks and nuns would travel through for centuries as part of like their holy pilgrimage journey through this forest. And right now we are in it. And also another fact about these rocks beneath me, these cobblestones, they are actually constructed in the Edo period using a special technique right here where they're kind of piled together and this will prevent them from sliding away during rain time. So you can see they are really tightly knitted up. Okay, I took off my jacket because it was so hot. But now, after all that hiking, we must have a prize for our hike. And this is it. There's a little gazebo on the top. And this is the amazing view. This is the Shichiri Mihama beach that spans 22 kilometers and one of the longest sand beach in Japan. It's just so mind-boggling to see how long it is. We have this amazing view for our lunch. Here, facing the sea. For those of you who want to do something artsy or like a workshop, I tried a Japanese aroma room spray workshop to create my own fragrance using Japanese local scents and it was really fun. 
almost like a science experiment. I had to choose some essential oils as a base and mix it with scented water and ethanol. For me, I decided on Hinoki wood and yuzu fragrance. I'm going to pour the ethanol into this beaker and give it a little stir. I'm going to pour the scented water into the beaker. Wow, look at that. Something's happening. After mixing everything up and bottling it, I finally got my own room spray and it smelled really earthy. Okay, so that's what my, my favourite scent smells like. Really woody. Lion head, which is right here actually. If you can see over here, the shape looks like a lion, maybe about to open his mouth and eat. Seems that we are getting closer to the sea. Can you hear it? Yep, right now we are at Onigajo, very near the restaurant and the hiking trail. So this is actually a nature world heritage site whereby the volcanic ash has been mixed with the waves and the earthquake movement to form this huge rock formation and also kind of like an interesting structure. I'm going to go in further and look around. Wow, I feel like I'm going to get dwarfed or like covered by this rock wave. It literally feels like it's a huge wave. It's at this angle like this. It is also very near the edge of the sea and it's really scary, so do not go down here. It's a nice view to just sit here and just watch the sunset or the sunrise. My goodness, I am so scared guys. You have to stay close to the wall to walk further up and there's a little like crack with a bridge in between. Yeah, I am scared. I am scared. <laughs> Out of all the places, this one definitely is just so mind-blowing and I'm really happy to have come to this area. Hope you guys enjoyed all of these amazing places and what to do in Mie. Tons of things to see. I don't think I even covered most of it. I tried my best. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.